All right, here we go. So let's go to today's questions of the day. Start with the very first question. First question is from, what does it say? It is from Shelly in Singapore. And the question is, uh, I'm not sure what it means to discover the treasure. How does working allow you to discover treasure? Okay, so what does it mean to discover the treasure? One second. Okay, so what does it mean to discover the treasure? Now, discovering the treasure means that, you know, tre there are different treasures for different people. Like, for instance, I'll tell you, like, one of the treasures I might find in my life is, like, the value of my parents, right? People may not understand how valuable your parents are till later in life. That's another big, valuable treasure, right? So how would I understand the value of my parents? Well, through working. And you're like, what do you mean? Do you get a job? No. Is when I do the same work as my parents. And you're like, what? What does that mean? So in the midst of me doing my work, work not meaning so much like a job, but it's doing, doing the works of life. Many people begin to realize the value of their parents and just the depth of their love is after they become parents, right? So in the midst of you being a parent, you realize, wow, my mom did this for me. Wow, my dad loved me this much. And in the midst of doing that work of life, you realize and discover these treasures, right? So this is a kind. This is one of, one of the ways when it comes to the, the value of your parents, you're able to realize it as you're doing the work of parents. You realize, oh my goodness, parents are amazing, right? And it, it could be in work. You can realize the value of work itself, the value of money when you spend it or when you lose it, or when you experience something where you buy your first car it could be a myvi or something that's really cheap car but you realize how valuable it really is because you worked for every single penny right so these are some of the treasures that you can discover that makes sense shelly all right let's move on to the next person uh next person is uh john in kl says uh what happens if i lose value in something how do i get it back yes and this is something that's very interesting uh what happens to a lot of people is we do tend to lose value in things pretty quickly. It's like whatever it is. In the beginning, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so valuable. But then later you're like, hey, and then you kind of like chuck it out of the way, right? Because you kind of lost value, right? So what allows you to keep the value of something? Now I'm gonna give you uh, just one hint that will help you to keep value of something, okay? And I, this might seem really weird, I'm telling you right now, if you are always thankful for that one thing you have, you will always be reminded of the value. How many times have you had it where you don't realize that until you lose it, right? So when you lose, like, oh, 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 I don't have it, right? Oh, no, it was so valuable in my life, right? It means that you forgot how valuable it was, which means that you're thankful every day for that thing. What does it do? It reminds you. It reminds you when you throw it away, right? It reminds you, oh, this is why it's valuable. Oh yeah, this is what my grandmother did to give this to me. Yeah, this makes more sense because I remember, I remember the time when I didn't have a pen and I was struggling and I couldn't do my test, right? So that is, you. one one piece of advice I give you is be thankful for it every day because you'll think about it all the time. You're like, oh, this, this is so valuable, okay? Thank you, John, all the way over there in KL. Next question is, from Taiwan, is Kelly in Taiwan? Why do you quote the Bible so much? All right, so uh, you might be someone who's pretty new to today's channel, which means I'll probably have one more subscriber. Yay. Okay, either way. Um, the reason why is, well, myself, I'm a very spiritual and I would say a faithful person. Before doing the YouTube channel, I was a, I'm not, I'm still a pastor, but I was pastoring a church in New York. And even before that, I was a missionary. I traveled to about 23 different countries. And uh, through my faith and through the Bible, I've been able to help tons of people. And now that my time is done doing that work, I realize well, you know, so many people can be helped by these things. And so many people can be edified uh, by the things that I've learned along the path over the last like 20 years doing this uh, speaking, helping and counseling people. So this is, this is why I quote it so much because it's something that I read a lot. It's something that I benefit a lot from. And when I put it into action, it helps me. And when I've taught before this YouTube channel, because this YouTube channel started in March, right? Um, before I'm like in March, this one started in April, maybe end of April around there. So uh, 
Before that, I was already helping a lot of people. And everything I was, doing, was helping them was through what I learned through the Bible, right? So it's a very, you know, there's so many books in the world. There's math books, philosophy books, sociology books, history books, and whatnot. Those teach those things, right? But it's very few books in the world that are actually teaching us about life, right? And this is why uh, when it comes to helping people about life, I need to refer to a book of life, okay? Thanks, Kelly, for that great question. Uh, I believe this is the last question for today. I believe. I believe I can fly. Either one it is. I mean, this could be it, right? Uh, this is from Hannah. Hannah, Yusan. in the Philippines, what if your friends do not recognize your love? Okay, so this is something that's very interesting because we have to look at it in several different ways. What, what does it mean that your friends don't recognize your love? Because technically speaking is... Everyone shows their love in a different way also. Example, right? And this is going to be an extreme example. Someone's been neglected in their life and doesn't have a lot of love come to them. When they, re when they receive love, it's very, very uncomfortable. So they feel it, it, the person giving the love is like, why are they reacting? Like, What's wrong with them? And a lot of times we don't really know how people really receive love or how they react to love. And sometimes because they don't receive a lot of love, they don't even know how to actually react to it in a certain way. Yes, there are people who take advantage of love. There are. And there are people that do not recognize your love. But also what we want to do is we never want to get into a position of misunderstanding. We say, hey, you don't recognize my love or even think that because first we need to understand them, where they're coming from, right? There are people who've been neglected, not having much love. And the way that they receive love and the way they react to it is so different than what we would do. The problem is we think they should react the way we want them to react to recognize my love. If you're going to recognize my love, you should do this and you should do this, 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 right? But a lot of times we need to find out about our friends too a little bit more. And sometimes they're in a situation or circumstance, they can't really help but react that way. But when you discuss and communicate with each other, which I say is one of the most important things between two people, you really, really have to discuss with each other, communicate. Because soon you could find out, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I had this on my mind, so I couldn't do this. Or, oh, you know what? I, I think I do. I don't recognize your love. I'm so sorry. But the moment you communicate, that's going to be the best thing possible. But I do suggest um, you guys do communicate and figure out, oh, this is what's going on, right? Uh, before we can actually say, do they really recognize my love or not? I hope that helps you out, Hannah, because I think you should. we should discover that first, have, go into discovery. Whenever there's a court trial, right? Whenever there's a trial and someone says, you are guilty, before all that, there's a time of discovery discovering all the evidence first. And after discovering, they put the evidence on the table and then there's a judgment at the end. So I hope that we can do the same things too. All right. Uh, this is, I believe, is the last question of the day, also from the Philippines. And this is from Mirasol. Mirasol in the Philippines. And she asks, is it all right to fake till you make it when it comes to realizing the value? And the answer is yes. Yes. Right, because um, let me give you an example of some things that you have to fake it to make it is this some things you know you should value, like you know it's valuable, like your mom or your dad. Sometimes you know they're valuable, but you're just angry, you know they're valuable, but you're just like, Oh, I'm just too upset, or whatever it is. It could be something that someone gave you, right? But you also have to realize this you already know in your head how valuable it is, and that's why you need to fake it, right? But I don't think it's actual faking, honestly. I don't think it's like, I don't think the fake you're talking about is the same is is the fake that other people are thinking like faking it it means that i super hate you you are the worst thing ever you're not valuable so i'm just gonna fake it right you're kind of like there's some things we know in life that are really really valuable they're really valuable but sometimes we don't feel it and sometimes we don't see it and we're like huh I know it's valuable, but I just can't see, I, I, I don't understand why it's valuable, right? And fake it till you make it is very interesting because a lot of the times studies show that, um, like for instance, let me give you a story of fake it till you make it is, um, people, who, people who are not confident, what does it mean to fake it till you make it? Well, people who are not confident can gain confidence just by body posture. 
right? There are some power, some poses you call power poses, right? And what happens is, studies show that people who, ha- who sit or stand in a power pose for two minutes can will take more risk. It does actually affects their mind. That's why you know you think in one sense is oh the way that your mind is I'm scared then you're like this right so your body reacts to what your mind is like but the interesting thing is your mind also reacts to the way your body is so even if I'm not confident but I stand confident I become more and more confident right so when it comes to fake it till you make it yeah they're they're fake it till you make it kind of sounds really like a bad thing because it sounds like it's not true or real. But I'm going to be honest is sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, oh, my brother, ah, why is my, you know, but I know my brother's valuable. Just at that moment, I don't see why he's valuable at that moment, right? But it's not like I'm going to treat him terribly because I do know in the future is because he's valuable. He's someone I don't want to regret about, like treating him in a certain way. He's someone that I love. So uh, I don't think he's actually faking it. It's just sometimes your emotions and the way you think goes up and down. Why? Because people do different things. We go through different experiences. But faking it till you make it, I think more so it is, um, you know, you already know it's valuable or else you wouldn't fake it, right? You wouldn't fake it if you didn't know it's valuable. Like if we're talking like like the, the bad faking, it's like um, treating, like this is something, someone you have nothing to do with. And then you treat them so well over the, oh, you're so pretty, you're so beautiful. But inside, you're just saying it because for the sake of saying it, and you're totally faking it, right? That's completely different. It's a very sinister and evil way of faking, right? But what we're talking about is things that are valuable. And we know it's valuable. And yeah, I don't want to ever regret treating my parents badly. So sometimes even when I don't feel it, I know that my parents are valuable. I might not feel it at the time, or they might have done something to me that made me upset, but I know they're valuable. So I'm not really faking it. I am controlling my body. I'm controlling myself. Because one thing we do know is this, the moment you become emotional, you don't think properly. Which means if I notice that my mind is not in the right place, uh, treating them bad is not the right decision because I know I'm irrational and emotional. Okay. Thank you, Mirasol, for that wonderful question. We'll go into the last, this is the last question for today. Sheena Gamayo, where are you from? Are you from Philippines too? Maybe? Philippines or... Yeah, maybe. Okay. From not sure. We're not sure where Sheena is from. Okay. Uh, do we really have to let go of something just to gain the hidden treasure? Uh, well, here's the thing. Remember when I say when it's, you have to let go of something in some, in some instances, you have no choice. Like for instance, um, here's a, here's one for sure. If you have an, uh, if you have a husband, you have to let go of your ex-boyfriend. Like you need to let go, right? Straight up. You need to let go. Like in that situation, you gotta let go of something. But the more symbolic meaning of letting things go or uh, selling everything that you have is understanding the priority of the value of that treasure, right? So it's not like if I find a wife, I throw away my family and my mom and my dad. I'm totally not doing that. But when I sell everything, my wife is at the top above everyone else, right? And what is it? What have I done? When it comes to her, her, I've sold everything, right? So it doesn't mean literally letting go, but some things you do, right? And especially has to do with the priorities in your mind, right? Is it the most important thing or not, right? So there are some some things you have to literally let go. Like if you get a new job, you got to let go of your old job. Makes sense, right? Uh, If I want to buy some clothes, I got to let go of the money. (laughs) I'm not letting go, right? So those are some obvious things. But uh, when it comes to these treasures that are worth more than all the things that we have, what it means is basically putting it high on the priority list, which means I've sold everything for this. This is the number one thing that matters more than anything else, right? And that's what it means to let go of something or sell everything, right? There are some things that are physically we have to, but in in one case, more than not, this is talking about these treasures that are so valuable. It's talking about where does it 
where is it in your uh, your ranking of your priorities? If that makes more sense. Cool. All right. So that looks like uh, the last question for today. Very, very grateful for all of you joining us here today on the Taco Tuesday. It is the 12th Taco Tuesday. Everyone have an amazing and wonderful, wonderful week. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Everyone take care. Bye-bye.